I tell my clients, don't ever, I'm going to say it clearly, don't ever look for clients, ever. Yeah. Find people who already have your client yeah. and teach them how to send them to you. and the, the avatar and you create an elevator pitch. That's the foundation. And then we need to figure out what kind of referral partners we want to meet with because yeah. what people are taught is go talk to your SOI, your sphere. That means your friends, your relatives, your family. A lot of the people that teach that in real estate got that from Amway. Does it work? Yes. Does yeah. it upset some of your friends and family? Oh, here comes Rick <laughs> again. He's just going to sell me yeah. his stuff. Yeah. So me personally, I don't like to, to go after my SOI because that's friends, family members. People go, oh, go to church. Good. The congregation is not going to want you there when you're selling your stuff all day long, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what I say is if I'm a real estate agent, <clears throat> mortgage lenders, financial planners, estate planning attorneys, CPAs, relocation companies, I'm going to have coffee meetings with them. Also handyman, roofers, plumbers, uh, people who install pools. Nail salons, bartenders, chiropractors, that's who I'm going to meet with. I'm going to teach them yeah. how to send me referrals. It takes me 25 hours to teach that. I answered it very shortly. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to find – this is going to – people, when they get this, they get it, Ryan. I tell my clients, don't ever – I'm going to say it clearly. Don't ever look for clients, ever. Yeah. Find people who already have your client yeah. and teach them how to send them to you. Yeah. So if I'm an insurance agent, Ryan, and I do business insurance, so am I going to go knock on the door of 100 businesses or am I going <laughs> to meet with – so you go, Ryan, you go knock on the – if you get this answer wrong, I'm leaving this this, this, <laughs> this broadcast. Yeah. Ryan, you, you, sell, you sell commercial insurance. You go knock on 100 doors of businesses, which is what your mentor told you to do. Yeah. I will go knock on the doors of 100 businesses business attorneys yeah. and I will build a business relationship with them and I'll introduce them to bankers and all these other industries so they like me and at the end of five years you're driving uh, no offense to people who like 1970 Volkswagens but I'm driving the <laughs> Bentley because yeah. Cole, when, you, when you're looking for business you will always look for business when you look to build relationships then you yeah. build a career that's, that's great I think it's important for agents to know that it's the like you said it's, I, I teach it it's the one to many approach where instead of just trying to go that one sale one at a time, you look for the people who can give you m multiple business. But like you said, it's not the you're not there to just look for the business. You're there to look for the relationship. Just to throw connect. two words in there real quick. It's in the networking. People call it sphere. They call it COI, POI. In the networking world, it's called power partner. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And I think another thing that I think is important for agents to realize too is the, the first time it's usually focus on is the the businesses around the transaction. And I always tell agents that's usually not the great place to start because they go after like the mortgage broker, the, the which is fine, but they go after a home inspector, a stager. Those people are the ones who are looking for referrals from you. So I look for the people outside of that sphere. Yep. And not that you can't get business from that, but it's like you said, the the plumber, the nail salon, the lawyer, the other people who are outside of the transaction who are more likely to refer you than person who's working who's looking for yep. with for referrals from 10 other agents, can, you want to find someone who... I didn't mean... I just want to... If I can yeah. pause you before you ask me the next question. Sure, sure. I agree with you and I'm going to add two. Sure. So uh, there's two types of power partners. There's the one who will never send you a referral or almost never. I'm going to give yeah. you an example. A real estate agent is almost always... almost. It's going to be, it's going to be 99 referrals this way to one this way. Real estate agent to carpet cleaner. Right. Okay, now... I had a real estate agent in one of my groups. She goes, I, I've given – because I run networking groups, everybody, and I do – then I teach networking. So I had a real estate agent. I've been in the group for 10 years, and the carpet cleaner, I've sent over 100 carpet cleaning jobs, and I've never received a re referral in return. That alone would be called taker mentality. Right. Well, I, he's not giving me any, so I'm not going to give him any more. So I, I was talking to her, and I go, I go, Lois – let me ask you a question. That carpet cleaner comes in. Is he good? Well, he's the best. That's why I don't want to stop using him. He's done 100, 100 jobs for me. I go, do you think it's possible? Is it possible that when you brought that carpet cleaner in, and I know you bring in handyman and painters too, that that person, when they sold their home, and one of their friends said, hey, how'd it go? Oh, my God. My real estate agent, not only did she bring in the carpet cleaner, the handyman, the roofer, I didn't need to do, look for it. She brought everybody. 
I want to use her. Do you yeah. think it's possible that carpet cleaner made the client so happy that they sent you referrals and she sticks at me and she goes, I've sold about 30 homes because of him. Yes, right. you have. So yeah. a lot of power partners are bringing service in. They yeah. will directly never send you business. So when you're thinking, but but you'll make sales. So, but the pure power partner is is over time is mortgage to real estate is 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 real estate to financial planner, real estate to estate planning attorney, and with the biggest yeah. and best of them all, is real estate and family law attorney. Yeah. But but let's not go too far down the road. We'll be here all day. <laughs> but the point is, when you're making your list of industries to have coffee meetings with, you got to go. Who can send me business? Who can send me business? Who, then then it's. Who can I send business to? Who can I send business to? And then the third one is, who can I send business to? I know they'll never send me business, but I need them. I need the carpet cleaner. I need the, I need the, yeah. stage is a different story because stage is a little closer to the transaction, but like the painter, yeah. the roofer, the gardener, those types of guys, you need to have them. And I'll, I'll close with this part on this topic, Ryan. It's my opinion that a real estate agent brings somebody into town. So when a real estate agent brings somebody from like, the, the, let's say San Francisco to where I live in San Ramon, yeah. if I'm the real estate agent, I feel it's my responsibility to provide them the carpet cleaner, the handyman, yeah. their new car, chiropractor, their new hair salon, nail salon, um, the, what best grocery stores, introduce them to restaurants. You put them in that city, you should be providing the vendors. Yeah. Because then all you're, you're building reciprocity with the client, but you're also building reciprocity with all of these other industries who, like like uh, hairdressers, one of the best, Brian. You get in good with the hairdressers. So we said, <laughs> yeah. my husband's cheating on me. I'm going to leave him. Well, when you do, <laughs> call Rick to buy your next house. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, That's a great point. And I think it's important that agents realize that, how powerful that is, because it adds a layer of customer service that most agents aren't willing to do. So you by providing that, you're providing value. It, like you said, it builds those relationships with those, with those partners, whether they refer you or not. Right. But if you do that and you keep doing it, they hopefully will brew for you. And I think a lot of agents have dropped the ball on that. And uh, one of my first guests, Matt Santagapita, he talked about that. He said, back in the day, agents used to be the Rolodex for the community. He said people would call the agent and they were the ones who would say, here's the here's the so-and-so, here's the plumber. And then we moved away from that because Correct. the internet came out and Correct. yellow pages came Shortcut, out. Shortcut, like lazy. Yeah. And he said, we have a huge opportunity because so many agents aren't doing that now Correct. to become that connector. And if we do it correctly, we can really take back our worth. And so many agents no doubt. Are, are struggling going, how do I charge what I charge? How do I? And there's competition, there's technology, you know, those things. Those relationships you have will never be replaced by a Zillow or by a big Correct. tech company when you have those <laughs> local relationships. And that's really what the key is all about. I'd like, to, I'd like to throw one thing in there, Ryan, you had said, and and I just want to change the wording of something you said. You said uh, there that real estate agents kind of went away from it and they're not willing to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to look and I know you're this way, so I'm not insinuating you're not, <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to say most people in real estate, they are giving people. It's not that they're not willing to provide all these vendors. Yeah. It's their brokers and their trainers yeah, don't know exactly. how to do it. So they yeah. didn't teach them how to do it. Yeah. They, yeah. cause my the real estate agents I work with when they hear, wait a minute, Door knocking, cold calling, circle prospecting, or sit for coffee with other people who could send me referrals. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What? And then yeah. I tell them my personal story, and it's why would you cold call? I mean, yeah. Sit down with me anytime if you want to have a cold call against networking <laughs> battle. I uh, I just 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 talked about this the other day with my girlfriend, and there was an agent I used to work with, and he said he did about one hundred eighty. This was. 10, 15 years ago. He said he did about $180,000 a year. And he said, but he had copies with people and he enjoyed that. He said, then there was a good friend of his who did $250,000 a year, but at the end of the day, they netted the same amount and he had to do more transactions. 100%. The same amount. He said, I enjoyed it because I got to meet with people, <clears throat> spend time with them, build relationships with them. And he said, I would rather do that than be out slugging, selling more houses just so I can make the same amount of money. And that's, Brent, that's I, what the key is. I can't show you because I have a sleeve on, but I want to hug you right now. So the, the, the <laughs> yeah. goosebump guarantee at the end of the year, the networker is going to make more with zero marketing expenses. But Ryan, there's something more important than that. Let's say the guy that makes 300 and the networker, uh, let's say that, let's say the marketer net makes 300 and the networker uh, makes 275. So congratulations. The marketer makes more Ryan 1 million trillion percent guarantee on this. This guy 
is chasing leads. People are asking for discounts right at the last minute. Hey, I'm going to go with someone else. This guy is working 70 hours a week. This guy made 20 or 30,000 less is working 20 or 25 hours a week. Yeah. So if he got up to 60 hours a week, he's making 800, 900,000. This guy's at 300,000 because he's chasing caca all day. Yeah. So yes, the <laughs> marketer is out of pocket way more money and is working way more. Now in the beginning, let me back up. To build your network, I've had over 6,000 one-on-one coffee meetings, but I didn't have 6,000 in a week. Yeah, exactly. Five to 10 a week is what I did. And even now, Ryan, and I don't even have to be here. As you know, I don't have to, I could stay at home and smoke cigars all day. I don't have to work. Yeah. And I'm still doing three a week. Because what am I doing? 52 years old. I got to do something. And it's freaking fun. What, what we're doing, what we're doing right now is what I'm doing with other professionals. We're learning about each other, even though kind of you're just learning about me today. But we're learning about each other. We're figuring out how in the hell can I send a client to you and how can I get you to send one to me? We're just over coffee and a freaking muffin. That's the greatest thing ever. Or or show a guy 75 homes at the last minute. I'm going to go with my next door neighbor. He's a real estate agent. <laughs> that yeah. almost never happens when you have a referral-based practice. Yeah. Back to you. Yeah, and that, to the point is that one of the things I get asked all the time is agents say, like, if I'm brand new, I don't have a lot of money, what would I do? And a lot of people will say, oh, spend it on online ads, spend it right. on this and that. And I, I my advice is always take $1,000 for one year. And I said, go out and take one person for a coffee every day. That's $2 each for a coffee, $4 a day, five days a week. That's 250 coffees in a year. That's $1,000. And I said, if you do that correctly and you are willing to meet a new person, and whether it's a business owner, I, that's who I would start with is business people. And you literally will, the trajectory of your business will completely change mm -hmm. if you're willing to do that. However, most people aren't willing to do that. And they would, like they you don't said, they'd know how. chase, yeah. they'd spend four, three hours chasing cold leads, That's they'll it. prospect, they'll do whatever they right. want, and they're they're not getting results. So right. to your point about not knowing how, let's take it to the next level is, yeah, the coming from value is, is so important. And I know even for my own business, when I when I did do door knock in my farm, it was coming from value because we were bringing value to them. We had a neighborhood report and a, a newsletter yeah. and different valuable items. And when you change gears to I'm coming from value, the, the confidence is oh already there because it's so much easier to do it. You're not feeling rejected. You're saying, hey, I'm giving you an opportunity. If you want right. this, right. and I'll, that changes how people do it. I'll give you a million dollar one thing, and I freaking hate cold calling. I think after six months, <laughs> you should never cold call again. But I'll give you coming from one example of coming from value. If I know a great, a great handy uh, um, um, gardener, mm. and I want to get in with him because he does mansions, and I want him to listen for if one of these people are – because once in a while, somebody's going to go up to their guy and go, hey, I'm going to do this and this, cut these trees down, and when I'm done, I'm going to sell the home. Yeah. I want that guy at that mansion going, sell your home. Hold on. Run to your car. Call, <laughs> call Rick Silva. He'll help you sell. Now, yeah. if I want to get in with that gardener, Ryan, you just walk down a street and look for the house that has all the leaves or maybe it just it needs – there's some houses you see that are perfectly groomed. They have a gardener or they do it. Yeah. There are some that are overgrown. I'm going to knock on the door and say, hey, my name is Rick Silva, local real estate agent. Just trying to help people out who maybe don't have the time or don't know a good gardener but like the – oh, my God, my house is so embarrassing. I don't know. <laughs> I got the best gardener in town. Here's his card. Here's my card. I'm not even going to tell you what I specialize in, but I'm yeah. a real estate agent. Wink, wink. Here's my card. But this gardener can help you, and I'm gone. I'm going to run down the street, and once in a while, Ryan, they'll chase you. Yeah, that's great. That's coming from value. Yep. Knock on the door and uh, offer other people services. That, that, that will never happen in your farm in the history of the world. You'll be the only one. You want to set yourself apart? You newbies out there that need to, need to if, you, if you're new and you need to go door knock and cold call, meet some, meet some carpet cleaners and some, and some house painters and some gardeners and just offer those cards to, to 10 or 20 people a week. Do that, do, that, do that for a year. You'll never want for business. Yeah, As, Especially in, in a specific farm where you know there may be certain needs for that neighbor. Like just say the house is 20, then say that neighbor is 20 years old and they may all need new roofs. And you can visually see that. That's oh a great God, opportunity you, for you. Yeah. Instead of coming from, a, I'm a roofer. Hey, do you want to work? Correct. Say, hey, I'm an agent. That's and right. I know a lot of people, I've, I've worked out a deal or you can talk to so-and-so. Here's a, give my card and he's he's got a and value add or that's something. That's it. Something, and that's going to the, the other half of the Yeah, the other half of the strategy is, so what we're doing is we're pleasing the people on the street. Yeah. And we're, that's how we're building our farm. But the, the more important, Ryan, when I was going back to leverage, 
It's not pleasing the people on the street, even though we're helping them. We're pleasing the roofer. Because I exactly. promise you, a roofer is going to go into a home and the guy's going to go, I'm going to paint these walls. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to put a new roof on it. And then we're going to sell it. Yeah. That roofer, if you taught him properly as the real estate agent and you programmed his reticular activating system, you had a, a good intro, you explained to him everything. Here's what I'm going to do for you. If you hear somebody say blah, 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 run to your car and give them my card. School, for instance, or I'm meeting... Uh, for, you said mover, right? Yeah. So mover is going to be relocation company. Yeah. It's going to be. I just look around my house. What 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 causes someone to move? Divorce, family law. What also causes people to move is marriage. Believe it or not, Ryan, the best power partners for movers: photographers, limo drivers, wedding planners, mm. um, uh, travel agents. You went, uh, and you're in this yeah. business, yeah, yeah, right? It's only reason I did that, Ryan, is because I have an advantage over you. Yeah. <laughs> day and night, night and day, I eat, sleep, yeah. drink this one topic for 18 years, 6,000 coffee meetings. I didn't make all this up. I stole it. <laughs> so if I want to continually bring value to the mover, relocation companies, when I say that, I don't mean the ones that do the moving. There are people, it's hard to explain. I don't know if this is everywhere, but I live near Google and Yahoo and all that, and they hire companies after Google finds the client, there's a company yeah. that's going to advise them on selling their home, uh, mm -hmm. packing up the house. They don't do the work. They just advise on it. Well, they need to yeah. They need to bring in the mover. So if I meet somebody in the relocation world and I introduce them to that mover, then there shouldn't be a whole hell of a lot more reciprocity I need to build. But you can also, here's one other big trick. So but it's too much work. It's too much work. I don't, if you have a nice house or not, I, I've had as many as, I can't do it in the winter, but I've had as many as 115 people or just because I have a, kind of a big backyard. But uh, my friend Jen Lee, she's a BK attorney, took this technique to millions. She just gets all her power partners together. So she, so let's, let's, let's not use BK attorney, let's use real estate agent, mortgage lenders with an S, multiple, uh, financial planners, CPAs. Um, yeah. mortgage CPAs, financial planners, estate planning attorneys, invite them over your home and do a potluck or yeah. do it somewhere where maybe you could barter with a restaurant owner to get their, their, their back room for two hours. So you're not spending too much money, something yeah. and put all your power partners in a room, Ryan, and just grab, I'm going to grab you by the arm, Ryan, as a real estate agent, I'm going to walk you over to a financial planner. I just started introducing to people. Hey guys, start talking. It doesn't matter. If there's five mortgage lenders and five real estate agents, the people it matters to are the people with blinders on and the people worried about competition and the people that don't know about reciprocity. Because, yeah. Ryan, if I live in Livermore and Walnut Creek's 50 miles away, I need to have a real estate agent to send them to. I'm not I'm not driving. I know people who drive, yeah. <laughs> drive six hours to show a home. I'm not driving 40 minutes. Yeah. Why? Send it to somebody else, get a referral fee, and move on. Yeah. So that's another way to build reciprocity with your with your network. Put them in a room. Yeah, that's great. That's great <laughs> advice. And I takeaway for me was that you said the, the limo drivers and the photographers, because I know if you can add value to them up front, a highlight likely if someone's getting married, they're going to be buying a house. I know for me, I the stat I've heard about uh, when people have a baby, it's a thirty out of thirty percent chance that once someone has a baby within one year will be making a move. So it's focusing Minimum. on then those kind of people and say who can I get in front of who is in that industry rather than just looking can, at. Can I? The, it, yeah, go ahead. I I just get so excited about. That. I'm sorry. I just wanted to, <laughs> and I want you to finish. That's thirty percent with one. I guarantee you that percentage skyrockets when kid number two is coming. Yeah. But yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk over. You. I just want to no, throw no, them. No, that's that's. It's just a. You, you have to think outside the box when it comes to this kind of stuff because so many agents focus on the the stager, the little mover, and those companies. Well, you gotta wait. Like, look you, outside the box. My wife. Just so you all are listening, I ask a real estate agent. They're all going to say mortgage lender, financial planner, CPA. My wife is on a webinar right now, so I can't go get her. I can hear her through the wall. <laughs> Has one. This was seven years ago, Ryan. When I counted it, she she was in the she was in the land investing business for four years at the time. 163 different industries, not different people, 163 yeah. different industries. That will force you to get outside the box. Also, as an example with, with limo, I work out with my trainer and one of the guys that comes there uh, is a limo driver. And I'd seen him twice a week for the last few months and now I haven't seen him. Guess what? Because he and his team have the exclusive contract 
with the Golden State Warriors. Hmm. So he's got half his team there. Guess where he is every weekend? He's got the exclusive him and his team for yeah. the Raiders, and they moved to Las Vegas. Yeah. So he they, he had him in Oakland. They moved to Vegas. He's the limo driver for the Raiders in Vegas. He's the limo driver for the Warriors. It's a good connection. <laughs> yeah. Well, think about his clientele. Yeah. Do you think a few of them ha- might have little expendable income for investments? Yeah. I'll stop there. Yeah, that's great. So then that perfectly ties into the next. How can our viewers check out what you're up to and connect with you if, they're, if they'd like to? So my email is one referral away at gmail.com, one referral away at gmail.com. My website okay. is one referral away.com, one okay. referral away.com, and YouTube, one referral away. So Rick, thank you for sharing your passion. You can clearly see how passionate you are and the wisdom and the experience. And I hope that the agents will go out there and really rethink how they see referral partners and refer and networking in their community and really make that a, a solid part of their business. Because if they do that, I think they can really change the trajectory of what they do in their farm. So thank you for sharing that. And I know our viewers are really appreciate it. I'm, so. I'm going to offer one thing that you didn't know, Ryan. Sure. So anybody who watches this video, Rick Silva will sit down on a Zoom for 30 minutes all you got to do is say you saw Ryan. Ryan, what's the name of your podcast? Launch Your Farm. Launch Your Farm. You saw the video on Launch Your Farm. You email me one referral away at gmail.com. I'll give you a free 30-minute one-on-one Zoom meeting. How about that? Awesome. That's awesome. So thank you, Rick, for being on there again. And I'm uh, looking forward to hearing people's successes with that and seeing your successes in the future. Thank you very well. much. Honor to be with you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.